Welcome back to the Early Retirement Podcast. Now, if you've been listening for a while, you know that I believe a good retirement plan is important. But the truth is, I believe it's even more important if you want to retire early. Now, when I say retire early, I'm really talking about before age 65. So if you want to retire early, the reason a plan is so important, instead of just kind of important, is that you're going to be cutting a few more years of saving and you're going to be adding a few more years of spending to your nest egg. So to really make this early retirement work, and I don't even love the word work, but really optimize it, you're going to need to have a lot more money saved up to reach that, what I'll say, ambitious target. For many people, it is ambitious. For other people, it's less so. But you need a disciplined plan of how am I going to save money, how am I going to invest that wisely, knowing I'm not on the same path as, call it, a traditional retiree. So just really important to understand that when we're creating this, there's more that goes into it as opposed to just normal retirement planning because we want to retire early. So I'm going to be talking about that during today's episode, but want to always say thank you to all of those who continue to rate and review the show. It helps the show grow, and it helps me let more people retire early. I want people to know when they are in a position where work is now truly optional. So I want to start by just highlighting a quick recent review. And once again, the podcast is on YouTube. For some of you who have been submitting questions going, the podcast, I hear you talk about it. Is it on the podcast apps? Is it on YouTube? It's available everywhere, but it's now also on YouTube in case that's helpful for your listening purposes. So the review was by someone under the username of eToken, and he says, fantastic level of specificity and detail in many different aspects of retirement financial management so one can apply to their specific situation. Thank you, eToken. I appreciate that five-star review. And once again, you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You can also do so on Spotify by rating it with the stars. So thank you for those who continue to help me help others retire early and help yourself. I love that this is free and my kind ask is that you help more people retire early. So number one, when it comes to an early retirement, how do you make sure, one, you don't run out of money, which of course the title of the episode, but two, optimize your money. It's one thing to never run out. It's another thing to retire, as I've talked about in recent previous episodes where people do retire and they retire early in fact, but then they don't do everything they want to do. There's that sense of call it stinginess or sense of, I don't know. And I've talked about it in a previous episode where the last thing I want is for you to have a child, just for an example here, let's say you have a child and they are at their wedding and you've kindly helped them with the wedding. Well, if you've kindly helped them with the financial aspect of the wedding, in addition to of course, helping them be born. Well, now all of a sudden, I don't want you thinking, oh my gosh, how is this going to impact my retirement? Because if that's the case, we're just not doing proper planning. And so number one here, when it comes to, once again, not running out of money, optimizing your money, what are the steps to think about? Number one is saving for longevity. The earlier you retire, obviously, the longer your retirement will be. So therefore, we need to have more savings so that that lasts. And Americans, and really the population, were living longer. In fact, according to a Social Security Administration study, the average woman turning 65 today can expect to live until she's 86.6 years old. Assuming that that woman retired at age 60, then her retirement savings would need to last 27 years. And that's without even discussing legacy goals or things like that. Especially, once again, that's the average. It might be less for you. It might be more for you. But we never want to plan on the idea of, yes, it's going to be age 87. So let's make sure we we cash our last check by that date. Now, I will say, some people will say, Ari, help me spend every last dollar. I don't have specific legacy goals. I have podcast episodes on that as well where I show you How do you spend every last dollar, but still make sure you don't run out of money in case you do live longer than you expect? So that's for another episode. But if she lived longer than the average, in this case, as most people would prefer to do, you want to make sure you're looking at retirement calculations, assumptions, guesstimates, whatever you want to call it, conservatively. So we need to stretch these dollars even further. Anyone who really wants to retire early wants to plan for a minimum of 30, 35 plus years, assuming you retire at 55, 60. In in that range there, you want to make sure that you're in a good spot. So 
the second thing, number one is saving for longevity. It's very basic, but that's just, let's understand, okay, what's the average of life expectancy? And yes, it means we need to plan for more time and we're going to have less time to save because we're working less. That is simple enough. Now let's go a little bit deeper into the 4% rule. So you might have heard of the 4% rule. I've talked about it on different episodes and it's a lovely starting spot because it makes sense. But what the 4% rule is, it's developed by someone named Bill Bangin and it tells us that we can safely take about 4% of our retirement assets every year without depleting those savings. So super basic example, we have a million dollars, you save $40,000, excuse me, you pull out $40,000 every year, you don't run the risk of running out of money. So that's 4%, $40,000 of a million dollars, simple enough. Well, that's wonderful, but the study was developed assuming you invested 50% in U.S. intermediate term bonds and 50% U.S. large caps. The reality is you're probably going to diversify further than that, which is going to help you, but let's assume you didn't. Let's assume you're just going with the 4% rule. Well, what was this designed for? The 4% rule was designed for a 30-year retirement. So if you retire at 65 and you retire and you're doing everything you want to do and now all of a sudden you're 95, the reality is you had a very successful retirement. You were able to do the things you want to do. But that's not the case if you want to retire early. So the question now becomes, how much can you safely take out if you want to retire early? And how do you adjust your portfolio for that? This 4% rule, it's a good starting spot. But someone named John Guyton created what's called the Guyton's guardrails approach, which very simply, he does a huge white paper on it, which is wonderful. And I can, um, in fact, I'll put it in the description because some of you might find it helpful. But The Guyton's guardrails approach is saying, let's not just invest in these two asset classes, not just intermediate term U.S. bonds, not just U.S. large caps. What about small caps? What about international funds? What about real estate? What about putting all these different assets, understanding they're going to perform differently? In fact, we want them to perform differently during different times. That's what leads to successful investing. Well, if that's the case here, then I'll be the first person to say, what would that mean for retirement? That would my first question be, great. What if we invest differently? Well, it has two variables. The number one variable that you care about is what's that withdrawal rate that we could pull from and never run the risk of running out of money? So the 4% rule, once again, was 4% of a million. So it could generate $40,000 every single year for 30 years and you never run the risk. Great. Now that's for 30 years. The John Guyton's approach or Guyton's guardrails approach is saying if we follow a certain set of rules, we invest a certain way, then we could reasonably take out between 5.2 to 5.5% of our portfolio, call it $52,000 to $55,000 in this example, and that lasts for 40 plus years. So now all of a sudden, we're looking really, really healthy going into retirement, assuming our portfolio can support that. Now, a caveat here, let's not forget there are other income sources, most likely, whether that be Social Security, maybe you don't want to plan on that. I have clients who say, Ari, great, I, I actually prefer to see that either at a lower amount, meaning if I'm projected to have this amount, let's take X percent off of that just for conservative at- estimates. Other people say, I just prefer to see it taken out entirely. Great. What does that look like for the plan? But maybe there's inheritance. Maybe there's rental income. Maybe there's a pension. Maybe there's just other assets that you're going to be able to have in retirement. So note that that fifty-two dollars to $55,000, that's assuming you have a million dollars. So if you have $2 million, all of a sudden you can reasonably spend $100,000 every single year adjusted for inflation and never run the risk of running out of money for 40 plus years. Now, if you had a crystal ball that told you what the stock market would do and inflation and interest rates and the economy, well, it would be very easy. But of course, we don't have that. So what I do is I take what my clients have shared with me. I take research. I take your guys' thoughts, questions you submit. I put it all together to try to create what I think is the most effective strategy when you want to retire early. And it's summed up in one sentence as I see it, which is you need a conservative retirement distribution plan, which will leave you the ability to not second guess what you want to do in retirement. That's what I think a successful retirement looks like. And that's only because my clients have told me that. It's not because I've done it. I've not retired. I have no intention to retire. And the reason for that is I love what I get to do. But of course, who knows what that looks like when I'm in my late 50s, late 60s. So a a common question I'll receive is, Ari, I love my advisor right now. They've done a great job. But please know that if they've done a great job, they're likely in a position to retire themselves 
also. So when you're thinking of, hey, does it make sense to hire an advisor to help with things like this? I love to do that. So feel free to reach out to me or a member of my team. But in addition to that, feel free to do your own research. I know a lot of you do that by listening to these podcasts. You do that by going to YouTube where there's tons of content. Um, a quick joke is I had someone I reached out to who was inquiring about our services and they shared, Ari, we've watched your channel. We've seen James' channel, who's of course my business partner. And we've actually canceled our cable subscription because we're just watching YouTube videos and listening to podcasts and um, just a funny side note there. So the, the third one here, once again, to recap, first one, saving for longevity, investing for longevity. The second one, it's the, the 4% rule will likely not be your, call it saving grace. If you're going, hey, I want to retire early. I've seen articles. Is that going to help me retire? I would say no. Let's look at these other approaches to really optimize this and dial it in before you say, yes, I'm going to retire. And there's a few more here, but the, the third main one here is what's going to be enough? Because enough for you is different than your neighbor. Enough really for anyone is going to vary. But the key word, when you think of enough, I almost want replace the word enough with sustainable. And the reason I invite clients to do that is the last thing I want is for you to have enough. And now you ended up with $3 million, $4 million plus dollars, which might not sound bad right now. Trust me, I'm sure it doesn't to a lot of you. But I have clients who have shared with me, Ari, I was not, you know, I was being a little stingy, if, you, if you'd want to call it that, in the early years of retirement when I had my energy and health. And now I'm projected to end up with plenty of money, which is wonderful, and I can pass on to heirs and things that I want to do. Maybe it's, hey, I want to donate to a certain charity, or you know what, I want to give back to a certain institution. Wonderful. But please know that there is a reality in oversaving and underspending. Now, when I say underspending, this connects to the withdrawal rates. And a question a client asked me is, Ari, how do I keep my withdrawal rates as low as possible? I've heard you talk about these episodes about 4% rule, guidance guardrails approach, all these different you know rules of thumb. How do you make sure that clients do not run the risk of running out of money? Well, the way I do it is one, I don't just take your age and I don't just take your risk tolerance is I want to understand you and truly what's most important to you. And I might come back to you with feedback saying, I want your withdrawal rate a little bit higher. And they'll go, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's completely different from what you talked about in the podcast and YouTube. And the reason for that is if you wanted your withdrawal rate as low as possible, I would tell you don't spend any money and you could have a wonderful withdrawal rate. But the point of planning is not to have a wonderful withdrawal rate. The point of planning is once again, to get the most life out of your money, we want to make sure we're being aware of that withdrawal rate. We want to make sure that we're thinking about it really intelligently, but we're not just saying let's keep it as low as possible for low sake. So what's going to be enough for you is going to be different than your neighbor and your coworker. And so $2 million might be enough. 5 million might be enough. 10 million might not be enough. It depends on how much you want to spend. So if you want to spend $100,000 a year, great. Are there other income sources? Is that fully taxable? Is that in a Roth IRA where you don't pay any taxes on it? All of these are considerations that go into more detail. Now, I always like to leave you with just a little bit of a bonus tip. So the three, once again, what's going to be enough for you is going to be different than your neighbor, coworker, peer. Number two, don't just rely on the 4% rule if you want to retire early. Number three, saving for longevity, investing for longevity. You're going to have to do more than the average person because you want to retire early. But once again, that average person, I just hate that average word. Now, it's helpful for conversations, and I still want to apply it here because I think it resonates. But once again, thank you for those who submit questions to say, yes, it does resonate. No, it doesn't. It helps me improve the show. But the reason I bring that up at all is that average, what if you spend less than the average? Then it doesn't apply to you. Maybe you don't need to save more. Maybe you should keep working but stop saving. Maybe you should stop working entirely and go get a job you really enjoy even if it pays a whole lot less. There are so many considerations here, but the last bonus tip here is required minimum distributions are going to feel so far away from you because maybe you're listening to this in your 50s or 60s going, RA 72 is so far away and I, I hear about legislation, maybe it's 73 or 74, you know, it's going so much further out and in fact, I'm recording this episode in advance and so it might even have already passed that SECURE Act where it's going to be 73 or 74, or 75 and so what you want to make sure you're doing is not under spending. And what I mean by that is if you're doing all of your saving to 401ks or IRAs today, wonderful. But you will be required at this time to start taking money out, whether you want to or not. And I don't want you unnecessarily taxed on that where you're paying tax on 30, 40% 
all because that's the tax bracket you're in. And it, once those RMDs start, it grows on itself. Now, you don't want to intentionally go, great, Ari, I heard you talk about that. So I want to make sure I don't grow so my RMDs are less. No, you don't want the RMD tail to get whaled by the investment dog, so to speak. But you want to have that comprehensive strategy that helps you get the most out of it. Now, you can plan for that. This is not something that, oh my gosh, you can't do anything. In fact, when you retire early, you can plan really well for this because income is low. You can convert assets. You can say, hey, based off of my income, should I do tax gain harvesting where you intentionally realize gains at 0% taxes? Things you might have heard in those articles you read online of how do I make sure I don't pay any taxes or how do the ultra wealthy save on taxes? They do tax gain harvesting. They do Roth conversion strategies. They intentionally limit their lifetime taxes. So that is it for today. Today's episode. I hope that it was helpful. Once again, I love to help people do this. You can always reach out and see in the description below to create your custom strategy with me or a member of my team. You can also see there are free resources below. There are eBooks. There are a free tax guide. There are just things I want to add value to your life to help you maximize your financial situation. My last ask is that you kindly rate the show um, so more people can retire early. Once again, thank you so much and I'll see y'all next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Early Retirement Show. If you have a question that you want answered in a future episode, you can always go to my website, earlyretirementpodcast.com. That's earlyretirementpodcast.com. And you can go ahead and submit a question that I'll look to answer in a future episode. Thank you all for listening. Please do rate it, review it, and share it with someone who you think would benefit from this information if there's anyone out there that you know. I certainly appreciate it, and I will see you all each week. Hey, guys, it's me again. Please be smart about this. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as financial, tax, or legal advice. Consult with your tax preparer or financial advisor before taking any action. This podcast is for informational purposes only.